we asked him to kind of reconsider his decision and see if we couldn't work something out and, and to take that draft written agreement and mark it up, you know, and point out some things he doesn't like about it, some things maybe he can live with, and, and then come back to us. And so he, I think he agreed he would do that. Uh, he said he would strongly consider doing that. So we hope to hear from him uh, in a week or so. In the meantime, we're not taking anything out there. Uh, we'll accept the brush at our site, and uh, the later date we'll just determine what we're going to do with it. But in the meantime, we won't be doing any burning. So that's kind of where it stands. Did he give any particular reason why the change of heart? Well, a couple things. Uh, one was some things in the agreement. Um, and another was uh, he um, didn't really care that citizens would be coming out there on his property. He was concerned maybe about some liability issues. and. Uh, that's about those are the main things aren't the end of the day. yeah so. yeah there I think one of the one of the other things was is uh, you know when Kevin and I sent the office what we agreed upon was you know uh, no citizens going out there and uh, but we put some signage up and some handouts and probably didn't didn't get the communication to staff as, as good as I probably should have or like to um, but uh, I think citizens were seeing um, we had a map, I believe, set up um, for people, and it was really, my intent for it was for the commercial haulers, not for citizens, but I think some private citizens would, you know, got the, um, they kind of read into it that they would take it out there and set it at the couple site too, but that wasn't really the intent. Um, but uh, he hasn't seen too many private citizens out there, so, um, but nonetheless, he, he doesn't want that either. So, but uh, that was another thing I think that he didn't care for. Um, we had some, and any time we try to change something and do something new or different, it's uh, we struggle a little bit just be, to get everybody, uh, you know, in the, in the entire community to kind of buy in exactly to what we would like them to do. Um, he also was concerned about uh, even a city employee out there with a city truck if they slam their finger in the tailgate or get hurt somehow. He doesn't want any liability, and so I think that those are uh, kind of explain maybe the only things we can address in that written agreement to ease his mind. But. Couldn't we have some type of waiver or something that we could sign? And, uh, <coughs> yeah, well, I think we, you know, we can spell that out in the, in the agreement that uh, he wouldn't be liable. But. And, and the waivers, that's, we like to think that the waivers are, are a great thing, and, and a lot of times it depends on what attorney you talk to, but I've had a couple of attorneys over the years tell us that, you know, to get a consent form, like when we talked about a waiver for um, cutting out at our site, is it, are we going to be liable in case someone cuts their leg with their own chainsaw cutting our wood at the compost site? And I said, can't we get a waiver? And I've made comments like that about in the past, and the attorney says, those waivers aren't worth the paper they're written. I was like, well, that doesn't make sense to me, but that's, you know, I've, I've heard it both ways, you know, so, you know, but like Ron said, I think on a bigger agreement, maybe on a contract of some sort. I think as long as we have an agreement between the two parties and, and, and we honor it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the biggest part. And be reasonable, yep. you know, I think just unfortunately reasonable in the court system doesn't always work out well, but that's and what we the agreement, And the agreement wasn't been fine-tuned yet. He had not signed it. No, 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 okay. no, not yet. But, but the, council, the council hadn't approved it. it all, all, the only step the city had taken was with Ron and, and uh, Mike, I think, had come up with a draft. I read it um, and just said, yeah, it looks good to me. Um, but the next step was Kevin needed to take a look at it, and uh, he, hadn't, he hadn't gotten that part yet. Um, so. Yeah, we wanted him to yeah. Kevin. And, yeah. But I don't, I don't think it's dead in the water yet. I don't think it's dead in the water. And that did have the citizens uh, copy of his property, yes. and that's what he did not want. Right, yes. right. Yeah, yeah. That was. Okay. Yeah. So we saw a little communication gap. Yeah. 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 Okay. Happens. And regarding the commercial haulers, like, so no citizens out there, but you said that commercial haulers could? Initially, possibly. yeah, that was the game plan. And then are they going to sign off? 
on that too. I mean, they're going to be informed and know what the rules are and certain procedures to be followed before once we, we let them go out there. Then, right? Well, I once, mean, that's yeah, what once I think we needs would, to be done. Yeah, once we get in order, and if he's still going to go along with right. us, yeah, yeah. But I think you have to have each commercial hauler. Yeah, so everyone sure that's that licensed they basically sign off, know what it is, and sign off on it too. Yeah. Robbie had had some stuff prepared. Um, N not rules by any means yet, but you know, with a map and a few things ready to go that we could send out to the commercial haulers, but didn't feel we were at that point yet till we get an agreement with Catherine. Well, I think not necessarily send to them, but I think you have them come in and you go through it with them. I don't know if you should send them out and assume that they're going to follow it. I think you need to maybe meet with them again, just brainstorming suggestions. I, I, I don't think you assume anything. Could. It's kind of like a pre con meeting, we could do something of that nature. I mean, it, it truly, for a lot of people, it is. You got to hold their hand. I mean, definitely. So otherwise, they won't get it. It means a lot of dollars to us, a lot of savings to us as a city if we have that evidence. So the, we, the we other, need to do it right. Yeah. The other thing I've done too is, is I also called Jason Gooder shortly after I talked to Kevin the day that Kevin decided he didn't want to do it, just to once again put it back in Jason's ear that, you know, Jason, and I, and I know Jay Waddingham's already behind this. It'd be really nice to partner up with them to get a site that's our own control and their control, and, and uh, that way it, it's a lot easier for rules to be followed, I think. So, but we'll see where it goes. Talking with Ron about the situation, I think we were just a little too quick getting getting the information out there. You know, put, maybe put the cart before the horse a little bit, uh, getting things out uh, before we had an agreement signed. So um, take that into consideration as we move forward. Um, review draft of the hotel motel tax ordinance, chapter one twenty seven. Uh, Ron, you do that. Um, basically, this is a draft. Uh, draft. We uh, will have on a council agenda if it's if it's uh, okay with you or if you want to change uh, the form. Um, back in 2002, when the hotel motel tax vote took place, uh, the city council uh, should have approved an ordinance establishing this hotel motel tax um, in our municipal code book, um, and it didn't get done. And so uh, we're going to have it done now. And it would be chapter 127. Um, and the wording, uh, this is suggested wording from our attorney. Um, basically, it says, whereas the City Council of City of Hampton, Iowa, on the 13th day of August 2002, approved and adopted Resolution 2002-34, resolution placing the imposition of a hotel motel tax on the election ballot for the City of Hampton, uh, whereas the majority of the eligible voters of the City of Hampton, Iowa, approved on Tuesday, November 5, 2002, the imposition of hotel motel tax is set forth in the resolution at a rate of 5%, uh, whereas uh, the approved tax is to be contributed 60% to the Ham Hampton Chamber of Commerce, specifically designated toward tourism, and 40% to the general fund of the City of Hampton as provided in Iowa Code Chapter 423A whereas the Board of Electors in and for Franklin County, and as provided by law, approved the abstract of election. Said abstract of election was executed by all members of the Board of Electors and attested to by the County Auditor, the Commissioner of Elections, for the special proposition allowing the City of Hampton the right to enact an ordinance in imposing a hotel motel tax for certain purposes, which abstract was duly filed with the Director of Iowa Department of Revenue as required by law. Now, therefore, it is established and adopted as follows. Chapter 127, 127.01, as used in this chapter, the terms lodging, renting, and rent, sale pr sales price, and hotel motel tax shall have the meanings given to them in Chapter 423A of the Code of Iowa as amended. 127.02, effective as of July 1st, 2003, there is imposed a local hotel motel tax of 5% upon the sales price from the renting of lodging within the corporate boundaries of the city of Hampton. Subject to the exemption set forth in Section 423A.5 of the Code of Iowa as amended, Section 127.03, the hotel motel tax shall set forth in this chapter shall be imposed in addition to any sale, state sales tax imposed on all sale prices received from the renting of lodging within the corporate boundaries of the City of Hampton. Section 127.04, the tax imposed in this chapter shall be remitted by the person or company liable 
or saying to the state director of revenue in the manner required by state law. 127.05, all revenue received by the City of Hampton from the imposition of the hotel motel tax shall be deposited in the general fund of the city and shall be used and distributed as follows. 60% of the revenue derived from the hotel motel tax shall be contributed to the Hampton Chamber of Commerce specifically designated toward tourism. 40% of the revenue derived from the hotel motel tax shall be designated to the general fund of the City of Hampton as provided by Iowa Code. So this has really nothing to do with the city and chamber agreement that we've been discussing and had approved the last council meeting. This is totally separate matter. It's a formality that should have been done back in 2002. And so we are being advised to get this on the book. So this will go on the agenda uh, for Thursday for first reading. Any questions? That is a uh, discussion of alley chip seal options. Uh, so that has some information on that? As you know, uh, during the past budget session, we talked about, well, it actually goes back to last year, as alleys were deemed probably our highest priority um, by council last spring um, when we did goal setting session. Um, uh, this last winter, one of the things we discussed was trying to do a chip sealing application to some of the commercial alleys or some of the higher use uh, gravel roads that we have or alleys so to speak um, and we did that um, I have budgeted for about uh, 2,275 square yards at $5.75 per square yard and what I utilized to come up with that amount was uh, the get and go alley the uh, uh, Napa Alley and then 11th Street Southeast, which should be way on the very southeast. It almost acts like an alley, but it's it has a it's basically a street. Um, and uh, some of the thought though was that 11th Street really doesn't get as much traffic as maybe some of the other commercial alleys in the downtown area do. So the thought process and, and and I looked at it and I think we could extend. Um, we could actually be a little bit less than the square yardage and and do uh, instead of doing 11th Street Southeast uh, extend to the north one more block from the Napa Alley basically it would be the alley behind Hampton Heating and, and the Windsor um, thinking that that would be a better application uh, area for this um, we did have one concerned citizen this last year know that it expressed some interest in wanting to do something different on 11th Street. Um, he was going to do some communicating with some neighbors and such, and I don't know that it went anywhere because at that time they were considering wanting paving of some sort, and I actually had a price to do an asphalt uh, uh, paving for that instead. Um, but really, you know, it's. Uh, you know, we, we have some options available. It can be um, up to that amount, and that's what I budgeted for was that amount. So, like I said, it'd be a little less if we had that alley north of uh, the Napa Alley. So, but you'd be good to do a get and go, the Napa Alley, and then the Windsor and Hampton Heating. And, and that, that would, would all fit in the budgeted amount. It would all fit in the budgeted amount. A question that had come up before by a citizen that lives on the Napa or on the Get and Go Alley mm -hmm. was the question of there was some new concrete poured at Get and Go mm -hmm. that actually forces water to run back to the south. Uh, we wouldn't be messing with that concrete. No, we would just be going south of that. Just south of the concrete, um, they would come in and they would typically grade the area that's going to get chip sealed, get it nice and level and, and flat. Uh, you know, um, not overly flat. They they still want to obviously have some runoff, but the only good way to get good runoff there is put a storm sewer in it. And uh, boy, you're talking about some major major expense there because the next tie-in is at the intersection of three and sixty-five across the highway. So it, it's not really feasible to to do that. But we're still thinking that this double chip seal would still. Uh, give enough barrier for rain and stuff that it would it would hold up a little bit better than just putting gravel in it. 
every time it rains. So that's kind of the thought process. Might be. I know Ed, Ed Butler's real concerned about that area. It might be a good idea to just touch bases with him as to what the level's going to be, what your vision is of the, of the fix. I know he'd appreciate that very much. Is he one that's concerned that it'll go into his garage or something He's like that? He's the first nature? house beside Gettingo, just south of Gettingo. And his name is Ed Butler? Ed Butler, yeah. Okay. And he's talked to you before when, uh, a couple of years ago when that concrete was being put in. Yeah. He'll, he'll appreciate that. Okay. But if that's the case, I'd like to get them under contract as soon as possible, um, just to hold the price that we got and, and, uh, and get it on the books. And I know we're going to be talking about uh, uh, the engineer from uh, CGA is going to be coming um, to talk here, um, maybe it's Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, start talking about getting them under contract and moving forward with uh, the maybe a five-year plan for maybe. So. Any questions? Okay. Yeah, I had uh, sent you the expenditures and revenues, and um, we'll look at the expenditures page first, which I think is peach colored for you. Is that right? I don't have a colored one. But, okay. Um, the first column is the activity in the department. Um, the thing that you consider when you have to consider whether you need to adopt or amend the budget is the activity number, and that's the, the one through um, nine. So number one is public safety. And uh, the second column is the, the line item, which kind of identifies uh, what the code in the third column, uh, the code number is for each department and then the amount that we're proposing for the amended amount. And then the last column is a description. Uh, for police, we're looking at a uh, fuel increase of about $3,000. And utilities, uh, what you're gonna see a common theme here with utilities uh, for many of the departments. And one of the contributing factors to that is the fact that we had mailed in a payment to Mid-American last uh, I think it was last June's payment, and it must have got lost in the mail. And so uh, we had to pay out of this fiscal year for expenses that were in the prior fiscal year. And so it's making some of these line items. Of course, in the prior fiscal year, you know, we didn't pay as much, of course, so it would have turned out better for the prior fiscal year. But so you'll see that, on, you'll see some of the utility line items for many departments uh, being adjusted for that reason. Um, fleece employee benefits, uh, FICA line item, that would be uh, $3,000, we need to adjust that one. Uh, the FICA went from 4.6% to 6.2%. Um, that line item in particular is running short, we need to amend for that so that it doesn't go over. Fire, other capital equipment, $10,000. Um, this is a uh, if you see something on both the expenditure side and the revenue side, it's it's uh, somewhat of an in and out, like this Burmeister donation. On the revenue side, you'll see it. Uh, we're amending for the $10,000 donation. On the expenditure side, we're amending for the same $10,000. They're going to buy some air packs with it. So um, it was a nice donation, and we're including that on the uh, amendment. Function number two is public works, which is airport, road use, and uh, band shells included in that. Um, we got uh, airplane fuel. Uh, I talked with Jay. He's going to do one more purchase of some fuel before the end of the fiscal year. And so uh, we do have some funds in there yet, but uh, we need to add another $2,000 um, in order to pay for that fuel. That's fuel that we turn around and sell. And utilities line item for airport as well. Road use, we had uh, the lead operator retired, so we had comp time and uh, vacation pay that we had to pay out in this fiscal year that um, was not budgeted for. So uh, we'll propose to amend $6,000 on that salary line item. 
fuel. Uh, although we did have uh, uh, a good year for snow removal, the fuel line item itself is, uh, is on the low side, projecting what we'll need to get us through the June 30th. We're proposing to increase that $5,000. And utilities, uh, again, Mid-American Bill, and then uh, uh, utilities, in the amount, an increase of $6,000. That band shell, $700, that just represents the tail end of the repairs on the band shell project. Four, culture and recreation. Library disbursements, $250,000, that's the annual operations. For fiscal year, for the next fiscal year, 14, we did um, include that in the budget, so it won't have to be an amended amount anymore. But that, that as well as a, is a, on the revenue side, uh, kind of an in and out. So same amount on the revenue side of $250,000. Parks, uh, refunds for use of shelters. Um, kind of hard to gauge how many times you're going to be renting the shelter out, and, uh, so we're we uh, are running short on that line item, so we're proposing $3,500 uh, on the rep refunds uh, for parks. Cemetery, utilities increase of 500 The perpetual care, uh, that 2200 increase, that represents 20% of lot sales. Uh, code requires us to uh, transfer 20, or have put 20% of lot sales in the perpetual care fund. So that's that amount. It wasn't budgeted for. Um, and then project expense, uh, that's again the tail end of the, the fence project related to the cemetery, 3500 Pool, salaries, line item. Uh, we're projecting we're going to need uh, $7,000 added to that one. Um, utilities, 4000 Professional fees, 2500 That represents, uh, typically we wouldn't have professional fees, a uh, very large amount under pool. This one was, there was a new federal uh, law that requires uh, bond uh, disclosure reports to be filed. And so this local option sales tax bond related to that project, um, there was uh, fees related to getting that, uh, having that prepared and filed with the government, federal government. Chemicals, $1,000 increase. The other agencies, 20158 That's the digital sign uh, for the Fanshawe Park. It's through the chamber. That's an in and out as well. You'll see that on the revenue side. Uh, cemetery Trust. Uh, some expenses for Adams Construction for the tail end fence project. And under function number five, community and economic development, chamber, hotel, motel tax payment. Um, underestimated what we'll, we would be paying out uh, because more was collected. So the more we collect on the revenue side, the more we have to pay the chamber their 60%. Um, function number six, general government, city hall, utilities, 500, telephone, 1,500. Major reason for the telephone is uh, we switched um, internet service provider, went from Mediacom to Quest for City Hall and Police Department, and it was uh, they charged us more than Mediacom did. Insurance liability this is for property and liability insurance, uh, twenty-two thousand um, dollar premium expense over the amount that we had budgeted. Hopefully we won't have to do that again next year for a couple of reasons. One, um, I budgeted more for the next fiscal year. I think I budgeted uh, 133000 so quite a bit more. Um, and then also we'll be looking at uh, doing RFPs for the property and liability insurance. So hopefully that they'll sharpen their pencil and we'll get uh, reduced expense there. Hopefully. Nothing under debt service at this time. Function number eight, capital projects. Airport FAA project, miscellaneous contract work, $1,000, that's for the tail end of expenses on the hangar project. 
which is all complete. <coughs> highway 65 professional fees, 2,500 for highway 65 expenses. And then uh, just got a, an email today, excuse me, from the DOT um, indicating that they're projecting the final payment to be $86,088.02 for the to close out that project. That's the city's portion of that project. Haven't got an invoice from them, so but I'm anticipating it's a little hard to know when they're going to get an invoice to us because they sometimes uh, take a while. We had one invoice uh, that we had paid as part of the Highway 65 project that turns out was not for the Highway 65 project, it was for the Highway 3 resurfacing. Um, back then, the, the city agreed to cost share with the ADA ramps yeah, and uh, the intakes. And that project was completed in uh, the fall of 2007. And the, in, the first invoice we got for the Highway 65 project was in December of 2009. And uh, the other, there was two invoices sent to us, and uh, we we thought that they were both really the Highway 65 project. And one of them was this Highway 3 billing, 26 months later. So, uh, so I mean, we had to pay it, but anyway. Um, so we're looking at about eighty-six thousand dollars for the final payment for Highway 65. Um, Wastewater treatment plant. It appears, of course, that we won't be having construction beginning before June 30th, and hence we won't have uh, funds going out to a contractor. And uh, our auditor recommends that we make the adjustment in the audit, or excuse me, in the amendment uh, to show that, that these dollars won't go out. Um, so, proposing to reduce. $5.4 million in wastewater treatment plant contract fees. And that will show up in next fiscal year. Tom, is uh, his latest update was that bid letting would be in June, and uh, so hopefully construction will start in July. Progress Park Improvements contract fees, $167,000. Uh, that's for the uh, park improvements, of course. Function number nine, business type activities, water deposits, uh, refunds to uh, customers for water deposits. I'm going to add $1,500 to cover that. Water plant, salaries, uh, add $4,000. Utilities, again, same story, running short on utilities, uh, add $2,000. Miscellaneous contract work, $1,000. Uh, that was related to some of the well repairs we ran into. And water distribution, equipment repair and maintenance, $1,500. Engineering, um, $8,000 for the water tower project. Initially, we had planned on getting an engineer, but we decided it would be in our best interest to do that, and we're glad we did. Um, Miscellaneous contract work, $2,000 for water main repairs. The revenue side, these activities actually start with a zero program number. Uh, it's called non-program. Um, and in that would be hotel motel tax. Uh, underestimated the revenue, so we would add 4500 Interest income. Uh, proposing to reduce that by $30,000, given the, the low rates on CDs, uh, it's just uh, basically they're in the tank. We just are not getting the revenues that, that we used to get. Um, and miscellaneous fees, that's the uh, revenue on the inside for the uh, digital sign. Yeah. Why is that totally different than it was for the expenditure sign? Well, I gotta change that to 158. I have it penciled in on mine, okay. but I just caught that. So yeah, they'll be the same. 
I have a question Thank you. Why, why isn't that just new to the culture and recreation on both sides? Uh, I don't know. It's categorized as a non-program. It's just, uh, I don't know. It's the way it's set up, and uh, I, I mean, I can look into why that is. I, I don't know. It's just the way it's, it's been set up like that for years. Right? That code, that particular code. Um, public safety proposing to increase miscellaneous fees by 2000 basically on both of these we look at, at where we are expenditure wise and revenue set, revenue wise uh, as of I think it was the beginning of April and try to project you know how we're going to do on each line item for expenditures and our revenues looking like they're coming in like they should or do we need to project them down or project them up um, fire, that would be the Burmester donation of $10,000. Number two, public works, airport, uh, rental and lease income, proposed increase $2,000. We had uh, uh, last fall increase the large north hangar, um, which is uh, increasing our rent income for the airport property. So. Four, culture and recreation, library, that's the $250,000 annual revenues for operations, parks, shelter rent, $1,000, both option sales tax uh, coming in at a greater rate than we had budgeted for, so proposed adding $90,000, that's, that's good. Um, um, make a splash, this is private sources, donations collected. $9,000 more than what we had budgeted. And uh, 3300 represents uh, the cemetery project fundraising that we received. Five, community and economic development. The CDBG program, housing rehab. Uh, this will be in fiscal year 14 instead of uh, between now and June 30th. So we will deduct $129,000 as revenue. General government, activity six, miscellaneous revenue, um, basically overestimated the revenues, uh, so I would propose we decrease by $8,000. And nothing under debt service on the revenue side. Capital projects, number eight, Highway 65, uh, 21,000 to show Iowa DOT reimbursement that was received and not budgeted for. Wastewater treatment plant. Um, the iJobs grant we won't uh, receive until after the project is let. We won't be having the bid letting. Um, uh, we won't collect this grant until the next fiscal year, and it is budgeted in the next fiscal year. So $1.685 million proposed to be deducted from that line item. And we won't be bonding until after the bid letting. And so that would be uh, 3.5 million that will go in fiscal year 14 instead of 13. State revolving loan fund, uh, $50,000 for the 0% loan draws that have occurred in this fiscal year. Project part, or progress part, there is a project. Uh, grants, $300,000 to show the CAT grant. We had shown um, an amount for CAT grant, but it was uh, we brought in three hundred thousand more. So, and then proceeds of long-term debt, hundred thousand uh, dollars, showing the United Bank and Trust draws. Um, we had projected we would have more of proceeds of long-term debt in that fiscal year, and we didn't. So, we're proposing to decrease that by hundred thousand dollars. Um, this is, is there any questions so far? This will go on the agenda for Thursday to uh, discuss again and to uh, have the council set a date for the public hearing um, to amend the budget, authorize the staff to publish. Um, it won't get published until May 8th. Um, and the 
public hearing would be set for May 23rd. Just a couple things that, that I want to point out is that $30,000 decrease in interest income, that's a general fund uh, hit. You know, our interest income goes to general fund, and, and when that continues to, you know, you, it's a declining revenue, essentially. And uh, so you have a declining revenue, and our expenses continue to go up. It's just, it's not a good pattern, and so um, it's just something to keep an eye on and, and be cognizant. Yeah. And, you know, budgeting is, uh, like I always say, budgeting is you're, you're guessing what you're going to spend. And, and uh, you know, we amend and we're guessing what we're going to spend and bring in to, for the next few months. But the important part is the actual spending, approving claims. And, you know, when, when we bring something to you to talk about actually spending money on, uh, that's that's when the hard decisions need to be made, and that's when you know you really gotta uh, keep things in mind because uh, things kind of creep up on you, you know, that you don't think about. You know, you're thinking about spending on this and that, and meanwhile our interest income continues to go down until the economy turns around and interest rates go up. You know, that revenue is not going to change. Um, I did for the next fiscal year. I I notched that down the projection. <clears throat> to I think nineteen or twenty thousand. Um, so anyway, thank you. <clears throat> Any unfinished business? Anybody else to bring up? Public comment. Rich, do you think of anything? Um, Doug, can you explain what the topping is if you want to do an alley? Is that big rocks or something, or is that a pig? No, it, it's actually a it's an oil and emulsion type mixture with lime chip basically, or it, it consists of some that would look like a lime chip. And it what it does it seal coats kind of and hardens a little bit. And once it hardens, it allows water to shed a little bit easier, but it also uh, offers a little bit more stability. Um, whereas you know if we just put rock down in the alleys, you'll notice that every time it rains, then and the garbage truck goes through there. Yeah, or we're having right. issues, right? So um, we're thinking that maybe this might be an alternative. There are some communities that actually utilize this for their main roads. And actually, Hampton once upon a time did have some streets that had some of this double chip seal put down. Um, basically, it'll last. Hopefully, uh, barring any frost boils or uh, any traffic that might sneak into town that's too heavy, that can still create some issues for you. Um, you know, it's not the end all end, but it, it would, uh, we do believe, would uh, definitely improve uh, the maintenance of some of the alleys. You don't have to grade all the potholes. Yeah, there. oh yeah, they they come and through and grade things. Is this and something that will take the filling that you use for filling potholes? Uh, is it's a completely different thing? That, that it's, a, it's similar, it's similar, but it is different, yeah. It, it hardens a lot more. To the, it won't combine to that type of surface then. Right, it, it doesn't necessarily just kind of stick it out, actually kind of acts like a crust once it's on there. Like if you could picture a, a, a kind of a crust on top, um, but it's supposed to have some... I think he's asking if our Dura patch machine oh. will patch on top of that. Oh, yeah, I believe it probably would. I, I think we could try right. to do some of that, you bet. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, I misunderstood. But, um, but yeah, you guys that Dura patch is good for stuff. doing the streets, you know. Freshly black topping some of the streets besides. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah we have. Uh, in the works, it's in the near future. Or? Yeah, we, we're budgeted for a five year plan. We'll do a five year plan on streets. Is that um, so many streets per year or something? What, what have you got planned right now, Doug? Right now, I have, I believe, four or five blocks with uh, maybe two block alternates to where, depending on how we're doing and what year. Um, you know, if, if the gas tax goes through and we get some more money, who knows what can happen. Okay. But nonetheless, there, there's going to be a five-year plan, which each year has four to five blocks. Um, and then I have a couple of alternates that we may choose to do or we may not. And then what happens is then them alternates would go over to be the, the primary the next year, 
with with another three to four with more alternates that next year and it just kind of keeps yeah, piggybacking great. itself great. Um, yeah. and and we chose to do um, we actually went through and graded all the streets last year and kind of did an assessment uh, Russ Morgan and I did um, and what the council basically had directed was we would take a look at the worst first and uh, basically we did a scale of, of zero to ten and if you live on a street that has a seven or eight, you may think that yours is a 10, but nonetheless, we, we've just tried to put some method to it, basically, um, to give us some sort of a guide. Um, but not anything's out of the question, and if something comes up uh, that a road really goes to heck in one year or something of that nature, then, yeah. And, but this is mill and overlay. It's not new street construction by any means, but it is mill and overlays. It's similar to, like, or whatever it is along there. And yep, yep, and, uh, yep, that's exactly what we did on those streets, yep. Well, that seemed to be working out pretty good. Yep, and you do those on streets that the sub base is still pretty intact and the curb and gutter is still mm -hmm. in good shape. Um, the streets that uh, the curb and gutter is pretty shot, and you know that you have absolutely no sub base that needs some patches. Craig's got a question. Um, I'm, I'm finished with this. Yeah, yep, no, that's fine. Yep. I'd like to see us. I hadn't talked to Ron or Doug about this, but about the uh, proposed assistant manager position at the pool or the, the lifeguards, the managers. Believe, so I'd like to see that. Are we going to be working on that at some workshop? Or yeah, no, I'm better if you guys worked on that and brought the proposals forward. I think it'd be cleaner, wouldn't it? Well, we got to we got to have Bradley propose to us uh, what he's going to have for the position for assistant and what he's proposed the number of hours and things like that. We're waiting to get that information from Bradley. Yeah, he's actually been going to assess the wage. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes. Yes. I mean, he's been going through the application process and doing some hiring. I think he has some more meetings this week with some more lifeguards. I think he wants to see who's coming out, you know, to apply. I, I just wanted to make sure we had everything as tight as we could prior to opening. You bet. So yeah. we know where we're at, right? From yeah. the day we open the doors. We're sure going to try. Good. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. Didn't you give him a deadline? Uh, doesn't he have a deadline as far as when he Yeah, has I don't remember when that is, but he's. Uh, was it the first council meeting in May that he was supposed to bring that to us, Doug? Yeah, well, I would have loved that. I would have never asked. Yeah, I brought it up. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'll just grab it. No, I, I, I talked to Brad this last Saturday. He's been doing interviews while I was having my coffee here. He, uh, he indicated that he, he's kind of swayed back and forth now. You know, he's, at first he was really hot on an assistant manager, and then he went back and said, well, no, I'll just do it. Well, now he thinks he. Might know a couple individuals that might work out really well for this assistant manager spot. So my personal opinion, I think an assistant manager would be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I, I agree. But, yep. You know, you can't be there all the time. No, you can't be there all the time. But, but you, I mean, it takes the right individual. So that's right. That's right. That's right. So thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. One more, just a closing comment for Rich. The streets that you've identified for this year haven't identified them just okay. necessarily yet, but that. Thursday will be the time that you can talk to the engineer a little bit. Um, okay. I have given him the streets that I thought, and he's reviewing that, but he will share what the plans are. Most all is in the Southwest. All right. And I did write it down once the first workshop in May. Okay. He's going to get that. Thanks, Valerie. Yep. <laughs> yes, you are. And I knew that you would. You're welcome, that's for you. So now when everybody in town thinks I'm totally crazy, oh. so it was your fault. There you go. Play it on Steve. Right, Steve's out here. That's right. Anything else? We're good with cost. Okay, we'll adjourn at 646 then. Thank you. All right.